So the last tab that I want to go over uh, right now is the primary units. I'm not going to do alternate units because alternate units is the exact same or just about the exact same as primary units. You don't have the uh, angular dimension area here, uh, but all the other all the other settings are are the same. You're just doing a second set of units, and I'm not, so I'm not going to get into that. Anything that that goes on here will apply to here, and you you just choose whether you want it to be displayed after the primary value or below the primary value. So, um, again, if you're working in two different set, sets of units, so primary units. I'm working in architectural. You can choose whatever unit you want here, but I'm in feet and inches. I'm setting my precision to 1 16th of an inch, just like I would set my units. I don't want my dimensions to display a value smaller than a 16th of an inch, no matter what the actual dimension is. My fraction format, I want to change it to diagonal, or you can choose it to be not stacked. So not stacked will just display the full fraction, like side by side. Um, this is a company specific. Some companies will have it, the whole thing laid out. Some companies will stack them. But if you're going to stack, I would say go with uh, diagonal. I think it just looks better. So, all right. Uh, and then after we get through those, um, decimal separator, I think, is if you're using like decimal, you can choose whether you want it to be a comma, period, or space. And then you have this uh, round off which I believe is like rounding uh, to like the nearest, it's kind of like precision in a way, but not. Uh, I don't ever use rounding, um, but it, it's basically rounding. You can prefix your dimensions with whatever you want. So if I, if I want to prefix with uh, like, say I have, I don't know, W for wall, I say okay, and what it does is it, put, it puts a W before. Oh, I also changed my, I didn't even notice. I was changing my uh, my units to decimal. Let's we'll put this on, on architectural. I put a, I put a W before it. And there it is, W6 and thir 3 sixteenths. Or, um, you know, I could put like a, a, a space. And put, or I could put like a suffix and say space parenthesis wall. You can put suffixes that are automatically entered. And they're part of the the. Um, you can see that anything when you when you select, when you go to edit a dimension, if it's got this uh, background, it means that that's part of the auto generated text. So that suffix is part of that auto generated text. Uh, also, quick pro tip: if you go edit and you delete this text by accident and you don't know how to get it back, it's um, it's uh, less than greater than, and it will automatically put that text back. Okay, uh, let's get to the rest of this dimensional style modify. Um, delete that suffix. Um, then we have a scale factor. Now, scale factor is tricky, and it really applies towards more towards um, uh, layout dimensions. And scale factor was probably used a lot more before annotative dimensions were a thing. But what happens is you can set the scale factor to twice or three times or whatever the scale factor is. It applies it to that it's like it's like a multiplication factor so let's say i draw a four foot line okay and i go put a dimension and i, I modify and change the scale factor to two what i'm saying is it's 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 this scale factor multiplied times your the whatever distance is in the dimension. So that's a four foot with a scale factor of two is four times two. So I now have an eight foot dimension. When you go to your properties menu, you can see under the uh, primary units, I've got a dim scale linear. That's my scale factor. You can manually set that scale factor yourself and override anything else, and it will keep that scale factor. Okay. Um, again, this is more annotative will also take care of the same thing. This is just that scale factor is like fixed. The command line option for that is dim LFAC. Uh, dim FAC. There we go. Did I spell it wrong? Dim, dim L. Oh, I did M, dim F. Okay. I'm like, what am I? How do I spell this wrong? Dim L FAC also controls the scale factor. If I change this back to one and I go back into my properties. I'm going to go back into my dimensional style. You can see under the primary units, it's set back to one. All right. Then we have zero suppression. Zero suppression 
is notice how that my my text was uh did we not update sir if you ever need to update a dimension it's right here like if 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 you change the the, the style and the dimension does not update like none of these updated they should have updated i'll do a region none of them are updating uh so what i'm going to do is um you can click this and select your dimensions that are not updating and they all go they all get reset they all they all will go match the current the, the current style and i believe this is a way to reset your um like if you over if you do overrides on a dimension and you want to get rid of those overrides i believe you can let's say we put like three and it goes to 12 and you hit dim update it re it it just resets it to match the current dim style so that's how you can get rid of your overrides after you've already like if you put overrides and you want to get rid of them you can use dimension a dimension update or update dimension whatever and uh, update your dimensions that way. All right, so uh, zero suppression. When I put four feet, it just says four feet. I don't want it to just say four feet. It's, it's, what it's doing is it's suppressing the zero that comes after it. Over here, um, there's no zero before it either. But in a lot of architectural drawings, you'll see if it says four feet, it won't just say four foot, and then that's it. It'll say four foot, zero inches. What you can do is when these things are checked, it's suppressing the foot and inches. I want to do the uh, take off the inch su uh, zero suppression because I want it to show zero inches. I don't want it to suppress that. So I say, okay. And dim update. And it puts that zero inch marker there because I took off the suppression for that. If I wanted to do the same thing for... Um, the other one, I don't, I don't, I usually leave on the zero foot suppression, but you might want it there. And if you do want it there, just take it off. And again, update this dimension. And there it is. There's your zero foot marker for uh, anything below 12 inches. So you can do zero suppression. Oh, I just realized why my stuff is not auto updating. And I feel like a, a an idiot. Because I, at one point I accidentally hit override. So I might, I should go into that. Uh, I have some time on this video still. Briefly, what an override does is, let's say you want to use, let's say you want to make a few dimensions that are based off, the, off of a certain style. Like, oh, you know what? I want to, let me go back to this and see if, see none, none of my settings were saved. So like my zero suppression, uh, my scale factor, um, hit okay. And I think I, it happened because I did the demo FAC. Dang it, I'm not even. Let me see something here. Yes. The moment I did a, my demo FAC command, it applied a dimensional override. What is an override? An override is like a temporary override. So let's say I got these two lines or three lines, right? And I want to dimension them, but I all want them to be twice the scale. What I can do is temporarily override it by saying override and changing the scale to two. And maybe I want the color of those dimensions to be green and the text to be green or the text can stay red. This is an override. Right, and I hit, I close out. As long as the override is active, when I create dimensions, they'll match. My scale has been scaled up by two. My uh, my dimensions been scaled up by two, and the colors match. I'm still on, under the model style. I'm still on the same layer I was before. And if I want to get rid of that dimensional override, because maybe I just want to do that for a couple dimensions, I just double click, and. Uh, it's it's gonna what it's gonna do is get rid of any changes I made to the override and say okay. And you can modify the override multiple times. And now it goes back to the default style so that when I come through here and do this, we're good to go. So that's what override will do. Alright. Um and setting your setting your scale factor manually will do a, a, a temporary override. Um then you have your angular dimensions, which you can choose between like what, what type of units you want to use for your angular, your precision. Maybe you want to use like 0 0.00 and again, zero suppression and uh, for your leading and trailing zero. So same stuff. Alternate units, same thing as what we just did. So 
There, and I told you I'm not going to go into tolerances because I don't do that. So that's it. That's all your tabs for your dimensional styles. I know it's kind of a lot to get used to, but you will get used to it. And at least now you kind of understand. So when you go in, uh, maybe you work for a company and you need to tweak some of the styles. Maybe somebody messed up one of the styles or introduced some of their own styles that don't match the company standard. Uh, you can understand how to uh, how to modify them. So, all right. And you can also just double click to set the standard or hit set current, and that's it. And you can kind of compare between two and see like what's different between them and I'll actually see all the variables to control them not that you need to memorize those but you could if you wanted to <laughs> and that's it we're good for creating our dimension styles um probably in the next video um i'm going to show how to do these things in paper space and how scaling on viewports works